Hey guys, Tony here once again with part two of my Golden Age of Superhero movies. Um, all right, so in the last part, I ended off with the end of the first Golden Age, which was you know it was you know started with Blade, X Men, and Spider Man, and ended with their sequels, which were like I said even better than the original ones. But then the I would say the old mentality of how to make comic book movies started to come back. It's like Hey, you know, this stuff's kind of silly. Let's make cash-ins. So, some of these weren't, were meant, weren't made to be silly, but they, if for, um, either these movies, okay, let, let me just collect my thoughts here. Either the following movies I'm going to name were either made as a cheap cash-in, or they didn't fundamentally understand what the character was about. So then we had things like Ang Lee's Hulk, Right. Now here's the thing. I, I hated it when I when I first saw it in theaters. I appreciated what it was trying to do when I finally saw it at home and was able to really absorb it. But we had Stan, you know, Ang Lee's Hulk. We had Daredevil. Which, Daredevil. You can hear it in my voice. It's very hard to talk about. Daredevil is probably is he's in my top five favorite heroes of all time. Maybe top three. I love Daredevil. To see what they did to him when that movie was bad. That and it's funny because even now, um. Ben Affleck is like, yeah, that movie was simply, hey, he's a costume guy, have him beat up some dudes, cash, cash your check. That was the whole mentality behind that movie, and you could tell it was just bad. You had that, you had, later on, you would have things like Ghost Rider, Fantastic Four, um, another Punisher movie, um, these really bad movies. The Punisher I, I, movie could have been better. I, it wasn't, Doc Thomason was a really good Punisher, but it was bad. We had Elektra, we had Catwoman, like all these shitty movies were just coming out, and it, and it kind of threatened, you know, what we had. It was like, oh, this is good. Don't don't fuck it up, please. Um, but we still had some saving graces along the way. Most notably, Batman Begins. Batman Begins was in fucking incredible. You know. This was the bat. Now, now, granted, like I said, I I love the the Tim Burton Batman movies, but this Batman, the Christopher Nolan's Batman, was it was interesting because it's a more realistic Batman, but at the same time, he felt more like at least the heart of it, the heart you know of Batman from the comics. But he did it in a real way. You saw this, I'm like, damn, I I, I could believe some guy doing that in real life. I I could see it happening. Um, Batman was great. Um, I know I'm missing a couple of movies, but during this time, you know, it, it kind of went back to a little bit of a dark age because there was a lot of really bad movies. It got to a point where I was like, okay, just because it has a superhero in it doesn't mean I got to go see it. The movie that killed it for me was Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider was fucking dreck. Terrible movie. Um, I also want to talk about Superman Returns. That was an odd one because on the one hand, I thought Brandon Routh was a fantastic Superman. He was brilliant. It's just the movie he was in was really bad. It, it, it was just basically like ripping off the Richard Donner movie. I know it's supposed to be an homage, but it was mm, it, no. Nah, it was just very. If they would have handled it right, I think we could we would have had more Superman movies with Brandon Routh, which would have been good. I really like Brandon Routh, but I'm glad he's on you know Flash now. Um, not Flash Arrow. Um, so we had that. We had the uh, movies escaping right now. No, mm, Watchmen will come later. But yeah, during this time, you just had these movies that were kind of. Bleh. But then things started to change in 2008. 2008, pivotal year for comic book movies. This is what I consider the second golden age. And I still, like I said in the last video, we're still in this second golden age. That year, we we had three, you know, big movies. One would be, you know, the movie. Well, actually, maybe two. Depends. Anyway, so we had the we had the sequel. Let's just get it. So we had the sequel to Batman Begins. We had The Dark Knight, which is now considered <laughs> shit. The year it came out, considered a classic. The movie is like just like a masterpiece. I mean, granted, Batman's voice was stupid. That's like the only thing. But the movie was fantastic. Great iteration of Joker. Um, and what I liked about the movie was it didn't feel like a superhero movie or a comic movie. It felt like a crime movie. You just had these over-the-top characters with Batman and Joker, which played great off each other. 
we had that and then the most important thing marvel studios was born and, and they were independent at this point marvel studios was like hey um you know fox and all these other places and sony they have our properties we got to start doing our own movies with whatever we have left who do they have left they had avengers they had all, like plethora of guys like okay let's, let's do this what are we gonna do first let's do iron man now people were like you're gonna make an iron man movie like that b-list guy really and it's gonna start robert down robert downer jr the drunk you're gonna get that guy people were very skeptical about this i know i was i was like mm, i don't know about this but the movie came out and it was just you guys already know iron man considered a modern classic in itself and it is it's a fantastic movie one of the greatest like i wouldn't even say, even say just how one of the greatest films ever made um and you also had the hulk incredible hulk with edward norton in it another one it was like oh shit and what's interesting about those two and this is where things get really interesting and, and very exciting as a comic book fan now if you've been reading comic books for years one of the main cool things about comic books and marvel's the one that started this too the fact that all these characters live in the same universe before this every character in a movie was his own standalone thing right and now with marvel it's like hey uh Who's at the end of Iron Man? Nick Fury. Oh, shit. Nick Fury's here. And then at the end of the Hulk, Robert Downey Jr. shows up. Oh, what's going on here? The Avengers Initiative. What is happening? Planted that seed, which would obviously, you know, bear fruit later. You know, you consider the second golden age the Marvel age, actually, because this is when Marvel, like, they became so big that everybody wants to be Marvel now. But yeah, you know, during this time you had all the major Marvel movies, the Phase 1 movies. Let's talk about Phase 1. So you had Hulk and Iron Man. You had Thor, another great one. Hawkeye showed up in that. And you had Captain America, another great movie. And all this led up to the Avengers. The, the Avengers is easily one of the most pivotal moments in cinematic history, not just for comic books. Because this was the first time in history where you had guys from five different movies showing up in one. These were heavy dudes. You know, Robert Downey Jr., you had Samuel L. Jackson, you have, um, you know, Christopher Evans, you had Chris Helmsworth. You had these gigantic monster star guys in one movie, just like in a comic book. And that changed the whole world right there. Every After that point, everybody's like, okay, Marvel is doing a lot of things fucking around ain't one of them this is insane and during this time we still had we also had really good comic book movies from other places we had most notably Watchmen. um i feel that movie is very under underrepresented i guess like you know when it came out i understand why it wasn't as popular because it's a very thick movie to, to chew on just like the book but in subsequent years obviously people have recognized the brilliance of that movie um, you had the kick-ass movies, which were great, too. But for the most part, I mean, you saw some direct movies, too, like freaking the, the second Ghost Rider movie. You had Green Lantern, um, another Punisher movie, which is apparently the lowest grossing Marvel tie-in movie. You also had the the, fan, the second, the, I can't even say the second Fantastic Four movie. Okay, I need to collect myself for that one. Um, but for the most part, man, it, it's been a really good streak. And then Marvel had his Phase 2, obviously. And then they teased Phase 3. And, yeah, this is, you know, like I said, if you were a comic book head from back in the day, this is the shit you've been waiting for. And now DC is stepping up. We had They had Man of Steel. They rebooted Superman. Now, granted, I had some problems with the Man of Steel, but for the most part... That was a really good movie, and despite the fact that I was skeptical about it, Batman vs. Superman was looking pretty good, too. Even Suicide Squad is looking pretty cool. I think DC, I, I hope they don't fuck it up, you know, because it seems like they're just rushing things. But if they manage to keep things going, you know, the way Marvel has, as far as success goes, I don't think we're going to end the, the Golden Age anytime soon. As a matter of fact, I'm going to actually stop this video right now because this is a, another topic. But yeah, those are the two main gold, you know, golden ages. And I still believe we're in the second one. But there's some, maybe more of a twist to the second part, which I want to get to. It, it'll be about 
because people talk about when this is going to end. I don't think it will, but we'll discuss that. Um, oh, yeah, last thing before I leave. I want to mention a lot of those, like, Drek movies that came out, you know, Fantastic Four, Daredevil, uh, Ang Lee, um, Hulk, they were all successful, too, which lets you know, even if the movie's bad, people want to see superhero movies. Um, but we'll get more into that in the next video. So, again, thank you for watching. Watch my next video. Later.